Good question. Uh, in case you didn't catch it, um, the question was about the accuracy of the graph and your reliance on that accuracy. Okay. The short answer is I'm actually, even though I made a point that my graphs are awesome, so you can rely on their accuracy. You don't need to. What's more important is that you recognize uh, things like this, right? And the fact that a half root three on two, one on root two, they're trying to signal to you there's some exact value. Okay. Now, if it is not any one of those three, uh, or one on root three, if you're looking at ten, I should point out by the way, all on the reference sheet, they're all there. You can see them on the triangles. If it's not something like that, if I said, oh, um, no, that's not where I want to start. How about this? So that's clearly not going to be an exact value. I'm not going to try and read that off of my graph. I'm just going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to do this to give me whatever angle it is supposed to be. And then I'll just use that in the same way that I used it before. In fact, let's just do it right now. Um, can you tell me, go ahead and punch this in, but instead of a half, can you put in, what did I say? Whatever it Can you tell me what that was? Seven degrees. Seven degrees? Let's just let's just do it to the nearest degree. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, oh, my first solution is going to be at seven degrees, right? So if that's a half, then there's an eighth, or thereabouts. Okay. So if that's seven degrees that way, how do I get the other solution? Yeah. Well, it'll be 180 minus seven degrees, right? So from the graph, these will be. Um, 7 degrees or 180 take away 7 degrees and then there's my answer, okay? So the vast majority of these, the overwhelming number will be these exact values, but if they're not, you just find out what the number is supposed to be, okay? Now, with all of this still on the board, uh, I'm not going to wipe it off because I know some of you have been sort of watching carefully so you can write it down later, but just really quickly, I want to show you the versatility of each of these methods if I just tweak it a little bit. Okay. So for instance, let's now solve on the same board, I'm going to solve, let me think about it. Let's go <coughs> sine x equals minus root 3 on 2. Okay. Sine x equals minus root 3 on 2. Alright, now when I have a look at this, again it's an exact value. right? I can come over here, come over here. And I can say minus root 3 on 2, that's going to be on the bottom half of the circle, isn't it? Uh, minus root 3, I happen to know, is about 1.7. I think if you punch this in, you'll get negative 0.866, whatever it is. Okay, That's what negative root 3 on 2 is. So I'm just going to draw that somewhere about there. Okay. Do you see, I don't need to think about ASTC or anything like that, and which which... Which quadrants have negative sign or anything like that? The, the circle just takes care of it for me. Here I am in the third and fourth quadrants, which is what I would have known if I was really good at using this and didn't make any mistakes, but I didn't need to know it. I just draw the line. Okay? And then I say, okay, well, what angle will get me to this? I've got to go all the way around until I get into this triangle. right? So let's have a look. Y equals minus root 3 on 2. Here's root 3 on 2. The radius, of course, is one. Here's the theta I'm after. Okay. So sine theta equals root three on two. What's the exact angle? Look at the size of it. That's got to be sixty, right? If it's an exact angle, it's clearly past like the halfway point, and it wasn't this small angle before. Okay. So I can say theta is equal to sixty, but where do you start counting from on the unit circle? You don't start counting from anywhere you like. You start counting from here, don't you? So I'm going to go all the way around, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, plus 60 gives me 240 degrees, right? But look, wait, there's another solution. There he is, that guy. How do I get to him? Well, the unit circle is symmetrical, isn't it? So this theta, which you told me was 60 degrees over here, I think it's still 60 degrees over here. So how far do I have to go all the way around to get to this spot? Answer, 360 take away that last bit, right? Which is 300. And you go ahead and pop into your calculator, sine 240 or sine 300, and it will tell you negative root 3 on 2. Wait, so you know how some of these questions have like, they can have like six values, like how do you know? Ah. Um, you couldn't have given me a better segue to finish this little summary. 
Do you remember I started off this lesson, for those of you who were here, I was like, I just made up 30, 150, 390, 510. How was I doing that? Okay, here's how I was doing it. The, um, the trig functions, remember I only graphed uh, this part here from 0 to 360, but he just keeps going. He just, he just keeps doing his merry thing. We have a special word for this, it starts with a P, right? We call this a periodic function because it repeats every, its period is 360 degrees. Okay? Now have a look at my original y equals a half line. If I were to extend the domain 0 to 720 or 0 to 1080 or whatever I like, okay, I can see my graph's just going to go further. So I'm going to get, that's 390 right there. That's 510. Can someone tell me how I knew it was 390? Because it's the same copy every 360 degrees, right? Every 360. So if I had an answer at 30, I'll have another answer 360 degrees later, which is 390. If I've got an answer at 150, I'll have another answer 360 degrees later, which is 510, and on and on forever. Okay? Um, there are other ways that I can adjust this. For example, I could have given you this. Okay? Now, if you recall, what this does here is it makes sine wave around faster, right? It's going to wave around twice as fast, okay? So you're going to get solutions that look like this. I'm running out of board space. Let's put it in here. From 0 to 360, instead of just getting one copy, I'm going to get two copies, like this. Uh, one, two. That's really a bad straight line. Okay, like that. I'm still going to thread through y equals a half, like so. Zoop. Like that. Okay? Now, because it's the same graph squashed in twice as dense, right? You remember how last time we got answers at 30 and 150? 30 and 150. Well, I've squashed that down so it takes up half the space now. So guess what? That's not going to be, that's not going to be 30 anymore, is it? It's going to be 15. And then this is not going to be 150 anymore, it's going to be 75. Okay? And here's the cool thing, right? Remember how I said this had a period of what? What was the period again? 360 degrees, right? Well, I just took the whole thing and I squashed it down so it takes half the space. So the period isn't 360 anymore, it's 180. It's half the space. So if this is an answer, I'll get another answer 180 degrees later, which is... 195, right? And if this was an answer, I will get another one, 180 degrees later, which is 255. Yeah. And I can keep on doing this forever if I want to. Okay. So I'm going to pause there. Um, exercise 4C, 3C, 4C, 4C. Okay. Is starting to look at these. I don't think. Did I assign questions on it? I don't think I did, right? Because I, you were mostly working for 4A and 4B. So I'm going to assign them now. Um, you use whichever method you feel comfortable with. If you're like, no, no, I'm cozy here. This works for me. I'm not going to tear you away from it. But I am going to warn you. The unit circle's not going away. And graphing is not going away, OK? So if you're leaning away from them because you're uncomfortable with those methods, it's time to start working on those methods until you do become comfortable, OK?